Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and today we're talking about the Janome Skyline S6. In this video I'm going to show you the basic operations of this machine. So to start with, when you first turn on your machine it's going to be in mode 1 in straight stitching, center needle position, and a normal garment stitch length. Of course you can always change your needle position and you can change your stitch length to make it longer or shorter. If you want it really, really short, just press and hold. When you're using your stylus, don't press harder if it doesn't immediately respond, just press longer. Now, I've got straight stitch out of the default for straight stitch, so if I wanted to put it quickly back to default, all I need to do is reselect the stitch. Okay, basic sewing. I like to hang on to that little thread tail just with my finger, just to hold on to it for the first couple stitches. Put my stylus up there. It's a good habit to put your stylus back here in its parking spot rather than set it on the table. Believe me, it's easy to lose if you don't have it in the parking spot. Okay, so we get started sewing. Press the reverse button, and that gives you a, a reverse stitch at the beginning and then at the end. Make sure you're not sewing off the edge of your fabric because you don't want the threads to tangle, so stop sewing before you get to the edge. Press your reverse button for however many stitches you want. Now I've got the machine set so that it rolls to a stop with the needle up. You can also set it to roll to a stop with the needle down, and then you just push your needle up button to get it to um, the needle to come up. Now, if, you, if it did stop with the needle down, and you can change that in settings, pushing the cutter button will raise the needle and cut the threads. And the threads are cut nice and short there, right at the end. Okay, so that's your basic garment sewing seam. Um, you can see that uh, back stitch do doesn't quite look the same on both ends. I've been sewing ever since I was a child. I really like this second stitch here. I'm gonna just show you that. I'll show you these other buttons too, but I really like this one for garment sewing. I'm gonna slow things down here so you can see what I'm doing. When you first start sewing, watch what it does. It goes forward, back, and see it did that back stitch without me having to push this button at all. And when I get to the end of wherever I'm sewing, I just push this one time, keep my foot down on the pedal, it sews back, and then it goes right to the very end where I stopped sewing before. Push the cutter button, there you go. Of course, you can always take your fabric out and cut the threads with your scissors if you want. Look at that nice, neat back stitch at the beginning and at the end. And the back stitch didn't overshoot, didn't undershoot, it just went really accurately. So I love this stitch here. And of course with this stitch you can also change the needle position and stitch length if you want to. Okay, so right from the start here, this is an informational screen. Down here is how you change the um, settings and things on your machine, the stitches and so forth. So right up here it shows you that we are in mode one. When you change modes, that's how you push that. Right there, mode button. Modes have to do with the groups of stitches and lettering that we have here. Now if you were in a different mode, say decorative stitches and you wanted to get quickly back into regular stitching, just press the button right there, regular stitching. Now. Here we have the kind of, the number of stitch. So um, if I went to say mode two and I wanted to do say stitch number, oh this feather stitch number zero eight. There we go. Shows you a picture of what it looks like. And up here it gives you the kind of foot, the recommended foot, that's F foot. It's a uh, decorative stitch foot. Um, here for regular stitching it's the A foot and the A foot is the one that comes on your machine, it's the one that has this little button on the side. By the way, that little button helps keep the, your, uh, the foot level, like if you're going over a jean seam or something and it kind of gets stuck there, pushing that, as long as your needle's down, you push that and it'll stay there and slide right over that seam until it's no longer needed and then that button will pop out. So that's what that button is for. Okay. <clears throat> Then there are other things here you can kind of see from an angle, but if you're doing buttonholes, that will light up. That means pull down this little lever right here. Looks just like it, doesn't it? 
And then, let's get back to regular stitching. Um, if you wanted to have an automatic cutting after, say, a locking stitch, you press that button and this little light comes on right there. Okay, and press it again to turn that off. Now, when I did that locking stitch using this one here, that automatic back stitch, if I'd had this on, it would have also cut the thread. So, nice time-saving feature. So I'm gonna turn that off. Okay, now if you're winding your bobbin, that's gonna show up right there. Um, right here, that means that we have the foot control connected. So if I disconnected that, that would turn off. And of course, having it connected means we wouldn't be able to use it start stop, but in order to use that, you would need to disconnect your foot and that light would turn off. Then, <coughs> This is, the, of course, the picture of the stitch, um, and it's just an overall kind of a, just a general picture of what it looks like. Um, this is a better idea of what it's uh, going to show you when you actually stitch it out. <clears throat> this is gonna show your needle position, or in the case of a zigzag, your stitch width. And of course, you can change that using this button right here. And then your stitch length, is this one right here. Now, if you look right there, you can say, oh yeah, wider, narrower, wider, that stitch length or needle position in the case of a straight stitch. Um, and then shorter and longer, this is how you would change that. Again, to get back into default for a stitch, just reselect that stitch. Or in the case of a numerical stitch, if you change the, anything about the stitch, reselect the stitch and it puts it back into, um, uh, standard or default for that stitch. Okay, here I talked about the mode button. You know what that is, that goes through here. And this is your locking stitch, your cutter button for after you've done a locking stitch. And this can be e either having done this kind of lock here or your re reverse where you've got an automatic reverse that would be this one here. It will not automatically cut it if you are just in regular sewing and you've used your reverse key. That's not what that's about. It's only for locking stitch or if it's a built-in reverse stitch. Over here, this button is for stitching on the left-hand side. And sometimes in certain applications, you want to stitch with your needle in the left-hand position right there. Okay, oh, I forgot to tell you about these. Okay, these buttons here have more to do with when you are doing a um, sequence of stitches. Say you want to do a sequence of letters and you want to check to make sure you spelled something correctly. That's those right and left cursor buttons are what you would use for that. Okay, and then we have the triple stretch stitch. And this is an example of it. What this does is it stitches two stitches forward and one back, two stitches forward and one back. So you have three times as much thread in each of those stitches. That's gonna give you, and I sewed it on the bias so you can see, in jeans, uh, it gives a nice stretch. This is an excellent stitch to use if you are sewing, <coughs> the, say, the back crotch seam of some pants and you don't want that seam to ever pop, this is an excellent stitch. The only thing I would warn you about is make sure you have this where you want it to go. Maybe make little marks where you're gonna be sewing along just to make sure, because this is like back stitch with every stitch. So it's, it's not gonna rip out easily. Okay, and then we have this little guy here, which is similar to your three-step stitch, but what it is, is more for knits. It puts less thread into the fabric than this one does, and so it's good for your finer knits. It's still gonna give that nice stretch for knits. And um, so that's what this one is for. Now this is your zigzag here. Now you might be wondering, what's the little L and the little M, and then up here you have the little R. What's that mean? Well that means when you adjust the width of the stitch, L means it'll stay the same on the left, and it'll adjust to the right. And here's an example here. This stitch that I did right here is actually that stitch. This is about, um, you can see from here, that's the normal, the default. But I made it extra wide, and you can see it stayed the same on the left, but widened or narrowed to the right, okay? So that's the, what the L means. The M, here's 
example of zigzag and see it's, it widened or narrowed from the middle outwards. That's what the M means. And then number 13 here on the right, that means that when that zigzag widens or narrows, and here is an example right here of the default for that stitch. But for this thicker denim, I wanted a wider stitch to seal the edge of my seam. So I widened it without having to move my fabric over because it's got an R on the side, right? Means it's gonna stay the same on the right and widen or narrow to the left. That's what those little letters mean. Okay, now this one here is for doing a blind hem. Now this is an example of a blind hem. You can hardly see that at all. That's what it means to have a blind hem. It's actually sewn from the other side and it's a technique uh, where you fold your fabric this way, you s stitch so that it takes a little bite into the fabric and then when you're all done, press it with your iron, it'll be nice and flat and practically invisible. That's what blind hem is. And when you choose that, it, it says f use foot G. Okay. And then we've got buttonholes. Now, this is your standard square end buttonhole. And by the way, these are quick select um, stitches. You notice I just pushed one button and it got right to that. You can also choose to do, say, a keyhole buttonhole 32. There we go, like that. And here's an example of uh, some of the buttonholes that you can make on this machine here. And your square on buttonhole is almost always, that's the one I almost always use for everything. Okay. Okay, let's go back to regular sewing. There we go. Now, down here, I showed you a little bit before, but these numerical keys are for choosing a stitch in a particular category. Let's say I wanted to choose Oh, this heart stitch here. Well, I would go 47, but look, that's not the right mode. So make sure you're in the correct mode. 47 in this one was this right here, which is a, a applique stitch. So it's really handy to have that picture there. You can say, oh, I was not in mode two. Okay, now let's try 47. There we go. That's the heart that I was going for. Okay. So I'm going to show you decorative stitches in a different video so that um, we can really concentrate on that. Now, the um, clear button and the memory button are also involved in decorative stitches so that like when you're editing, say you've misspelled a word or you need to insert a character or something like that, you can do that with the clear button and the memory button. Down here, elongation. Now that's a really interesting one. Here's an example. So if we took this stitch and we pressed one, it would be, uh, well, one, two, or three. It kind of goes through it. I'm going to just get into that 87, 87. Whoops, 87, that's what I meant. Okay, good. Elongation means every time you press it, it gets longer. You just go through the cycle, you can make it longer, but the density stays the same. So you can, and it works with these satin stitches right here. Uh, elongation is not going to work on, say, uh, that stitch there. Hear that quick beep? So if you ever hear that quick beep, it means that button action doesn't apply to that particular stitch. So you would have to use this with, but elongation is a really nice thing, a uh, feature to use with any of these decorative um, satin stitches. Twin needle. Now that's kind of a fun one. You can do twin needle sewing like this for decorative purposes and I'd recommend using like a stabilizer on the back because you have just a single uh, bobbin thread but you use two spools of thread on the top. One with an auxiliary spool pin here and then your regular spool pin here and thread it with a twin needle. That's what that shows you right there. And use the twin needle that comes with your sewing machine, or if you get a new twin needle, make sure it's the same width, because that's how your machine is calibrated. Now to turn that off, you just press this button again. It gives you this little blinking thing to remind you to change your twin needle back to a single needle. Just press it again, and there you go. Then we have the turnover key, or the mirror key. An example of that would be if I chose um, 65 in mode two, that's this little heart with kind of a, a curve around it. And then I did that one again, 
and press the turnover key, it would give you the opposite on that side. So it'll give you a nice um, variety of stitches that you can do. Another nice thing, let's say you're going to sew a little line of cars along the hem of a jacket for a little guy. Well, you want that baseline where the wheels are on the cars to be right along the hem. Either that or you'd have to turn the jacket around, have the body of the jacket here. Well, you could easily choose that one. Let's go to mode two. And then we're gonna to go to 92. Now, when I press this, it just shows you that we've turned over that car. It doesn't turn over the actual picture, but now it's gonna have the base, the wheels of the car here, and the body of the car up here, and you can have the rest of the jacket here. So it's a convenience to do that way, plus decorative too. Okay, the back to the beginning button, uh, again, that's about decorative stitches, but if you have a line of stitches and you just want to go back to the beginning quickly, that's your back to the beginning button. Now, I only have one stitch in there, so it really doesn't apply. Okay, now we have the settings button, and I'm going to do a video on settings, but just know that that's where that is. And then we have the lockout key. The lockout key is a really nice, convenient feature, especially if you have little kids in your house. When you have that lockout key on, pushing any of these buttons is not going to cause the machine to go, so it's a really nice, convenient feature. I would still recommend, though, that if you're not sewing for any length of time, just turn your machine off. And before you turn off your machine, it's a good idea to just go foot down, needle down. The needle down, what that does, two things. First of all, if you have a cloth cover that you put in over a machine, that needle, the cloth cover is not gonna get caught on the needle when you put it on and off. But secondly, if you have little kids in the house, that needle is now safe from those little curious hands. Okay. So, um, I think that's the basics of this. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, you can put those in the box down below. We have lots of other videos on this machine and on other machines and techniques here at the our Montevilla YouTube uh, channel. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.